want to call this meeting of the Carpentersville Village Board to order. Uh, acting Clerk, would you uh, please uh, take the attendance? Yes, sir. Trustee Burroway. Here. Trustee Stevens. Here. Trustee Humphrey. Trustee Sabi. Here. Trustee Rayburg. Here. Trustee Schultz. Here. President Ritter. Here. Uh, we'll rise for Pledge of Allegiance and remain standing for an invocation from Pastor Ball of Faith Walk and Harvest. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Pastor Ball. Good evening. Uh, let us pray. Uh, Father, we're just grateful today for your goodness and for the opportunity we have tonight to come together and to discuss the business of our village. And Father, we just pray tonight that you would guide and lead us, Lord, in our agenda. We thank you, Lord God, for the celebratory times, Lord, and for all the business that's discussed. May your hand be upon this village to bless us, to guide us, to lead us. And God, we're grateful and thankful for all that you have done for us and how you provided for us. And God, we just ask that you would continue to provide and meet every need. And it's in your name we pray all these things. Amen. Okay, under proclamations, congratulatory resolutions and awards, we have uh, a little bit different. It's a proclamation that will be presented by Terry Dudar. seeking permission to use the village hall uh, on the side, the east side over here, south side over here, to uh, bring uh, awareness to the community about the dangers to overdose. And they've done this three or four years now in a row. Uh, like seven. <laughs> uh, but uh, at this here? Yeah. 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 So um, they're seeking permission from the board to use that on the 31st of August. Yes. Um, and if you'd like to say a little bit about your event. Thank you so much for considering us again to hold our event th this year. Um, what we plan is a little something different this year. Um, a little later in the day, uh, probably start setting up about 5.30, uh, having a speaker from our group, J2 Soon, which is a support group, uh, also from Run Center out of Elgin, and they're also going to have like information if anybody needs it. Um, and from GRASP, which is a grief group, and uh, then end with a candlelight uh, memorial visual. Um, it's going to be the battery-operated tea lights, so for safety. And um, I plan on bringing 129 because currently we lose 129 lives a day just in the United States. So our message is uh, to break the stigma, to bring people together in our community where they feel they are not alone. Um, many people suffer in shame uh, because of the stigma, and we want them to know that we're here and they are not alone. And we appreciate your support. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Uh, trustees, any objections to their using village grounds? No, absolutely not. No objection, so you're all set. Thank you so Thanks much. Thanks for coming. Okay. Uh, appointments, confirmations, and administrations of oath. We have two tonight. Promotion of Officer Kevin Stankiewicz to the rank of Sergeant. I understand, uh, Chief, we'll just put you in charge of this whole thing. Sure. Uh, we're promoting uh, Officer Kevin Stankiewicz to the rank of Sergeant, and then Sergeant Paul Brandt to the position of Commander. And this is all due to the retirement of Commander Timothy Bossart, who put in a little over 30 years, and his official last day, I think, was on Saturday. So uh, we are now moving to fill Tim's position, and to do that, we bring an officer up to a sergeant and a sergeant up to a commander. So we'll start with Kevin Stankiewicz. Kevin, would you stand up, please? And uh, before you get sworn in, we introduce oh. who's here with you. Sure. <laughs> Uh, 
and you know, NIPAs have been before the board until the NIPAs are the people we call out when we need specially trained officers and equipment to take care of situations uh, that require their tactical involvement. And Jerry Salam from the Carville Fire and Police Commission will be here to swear in. up the ranks. I'm very proud of the Carpentersville F Police Department. Uh, we do an excellent job. You, they do. And this leadership that you will provide us, I'm sure, will keep us on the path to being the best police department anywhere around. So thank you very much for your time and your willingness to take leadership position. Thank you again. Thank you. With that, we'll have a two-minute recess so that uh, if anybody wants to take pictures, you can do that. Or if you're only here for this, you can go ahead and leave. The rest of you are welcome to just relax for a minute while we clear the room. I'll talk to you soon. Yeah, we will. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. And I'll let you know. I'll keep working on it. Are you good?
this big show. Right. So we have forty thousand dollars worth of fireworks yeah, I mean, I for twenty. Maybe, maybe he's just maybe about what the budget is. Wow. Yeah. Now I don't know what no, people no, are going to think next year. <laughs> yeah. Right. And so I don't want to do that kind of with the park. We'll have to figure it out, and you know. So well, yeah, we will. So. If we can, yes, be great. Uh, we'll reconvene this so. meeting. Uh, the acting clerk tells me have, we have no commenters this evening. So we're ready for consent agenda. All items listed on the consent agenda will be enacted by one motion. There will be no separate discussion of those items unless the trustee so requests. In which event the item will be removed from the general order of business and considered in its normal sequence on the agenda. Any items to be removed? I'll make that motion to pass the consent agenda. A second. Motion, Pat. Second, Ginger. Uh, Mike, call the roll, please. Trustee Stevens. Yes. Trustee Humphrey. Uh, Trustee Sabi. Yes. Trustee Rayburn. Yes. Trustee Schultz. Yes. Trustee Burroway. Yes. As, all, off, as is often the case, there are some important items on here. Lots of road construction work that's going to get done. Some savings from road construction projects. But we won't go through the whole list. It's just normal village business, keeping up with the everything that we need to do around here. Uh, next would be reports of manager, officers, commissions, and staff. Uh, Mark, I see you have the chief uh, online here. The fire chief, yep. J.P. Schilling, will give a update of his plan of action coming on board as the new fire chief. Okay. And uh, with <coughs> that, I just leave it to you, chief, to give your, uh, tell your story. Okay. Thank you. Uh, President Ritter, members of the board, and Manager Rooney, thank you for the opportunity to talk to you tonight about the uh, Carpentersville Fire Department new fire chief's 100-day plan. Um, I was a little taken back after I accepted the position and I was back in Iowa getting making arrangements to come and move to uh, Carpentersville and the manager called me and said hey we want to work together with the with the unions and the, the village administration and put together this plan so we have a, a real good successful 100 days first 100 days and we can build upon those successes and keep making improvements with the fire department and I thought to myself for just a few seconds, I was like, wow, I've never heard of that. That's, that's awesome. I'm in, 100% in. And so we talked about it for a little while, and he threw out some ideas and then gave me the task of start thinking of how I want to collaborate on this, this um, plan for the first 100 days. And after I got off the phone with him, I, I started calling colleagues around the United States. And I got a lot of colleagues. If you look at my LinkedIn page, I've got like 2,500 associates. Um, and so I started calling close friends, close colleagues, and said, hey, have you ever heard of this, anybody doing something like this? You know, a new chief coming in, 100-day plan, make, you know, build on successes. And everybody told me, no, that's what the fire chief typically does on his own. But they were really impressed that the, the village management and the, and the union um, executive boards were on board with this. And the comment I got from every one of them was, we never heard of it, but please let us know how well it works because we may want to copy the same thing. So that's, you know, kudos to, to the uh, village administration, to the two union executive boards, uh, Manager Rooney for putting all this together and creating this collaborative effort. Um, so on, on July 13th, we initiated a 100-day plan. And the 100-day plan has 10 points. And the, one, the points we're going to go through tonight briefly are not in any particular order of priority. However, they're, they're all an important piece of building the department to the point where we can start creating new successes as we move forward. So the first one was just to form a committee of all ranks um, to review and research and recommend and implement revisions to the standard operating guidelines of the department. Um, some of the guidelines are quite old and need to be revised, brought up to new national standards uh, and new um, staffing standards and new equipment that we have. And so everything needs to be looked at and brought together. And uh, we've accomplished that already. That committee is put together. Uh, number two is in an effort to employ a strategic planning process, we need to conduct a SWOT analysis, which is strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. 
And whenever you do a strategic plan, the first piece of that strategic plan um, by standard is doing that SWOT analysis where you bring everybody into, the, into, the, uh, into a single meeting, you have people facilitate the meeting to draw out from the audience what their impressions of strength, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. And that's the building block for the strategic plan. From there you get your mission, your vision, your, your goals, and your ethics statement, and then also the short-term, mid-range, and long-term planning piece that comes after that. But first we have to identify, again, what the strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. Um, that meeting or that, that process will probably take place um, in October. I've contacted two uh, fire chiefs that are very familiar with this department to help facilitate that meeting. Uh, that way there's not any command influence from me um, when people want to talk openly. Uh, so they're going to be facilitating that meeting for us recording everything for us and then giving it, handing it off to us so we can move forward with that. The third item is uh, establishment of an interdepartment budget team to start the review process for the past fiscal year's budget and analyze trends and budgets over the past five years. Um, unknowingly, and I, I didn't put two and two together, uh, I'm used to a budget starting July 1 and ending June 30th. It's a little bit different here. Um, so we're kind of pushed up against the wall. However, we have established a budget committee. Um, we will be meeting it uh, hopefully this week as our first meeting to set the ground rules and, and the um, vision of that committee and starting that process because we have a, a September 29th deadline of getting our first draft of, our, of, of the department budget turned in. Um, so we've got our work cut out for us. We may not get in entirely through the five-year um, review period that we want to do. Next year we definitely will be there, but this year since we have such time, such short time constraints, me being new and learning the process, um, but we'll still have a good product um, for you to review when it comes to your um, purview of the budget. Number four is establishing a training committee to develop and recommend draft probationary manual consistent, manual consistent with job performance requirements and based on national standards. Um, the department does have an existing probationary manual, however, there's not a, a, a validation process to what those standards are that they're using. So what the training committee is going to be tasked with doing is reviewing that um, probationary manual, manual and attributing each one of those job performance requirements to a national standard, to a department guideline, or to um, a state rule. So there's some validation behind it and also so where the probationary employee, if he has a question, he has a point of reference to go back to besides just his officer. He has an actual text where he can go to and read what the requirement is. Uh, number five is develop criteria and process and procedures for recruitment and hiring of part-time firefighters. Um, we are in the process of determining this and that there are efficiencies of holding a combined testing process with full-time and part-time employees. The full-time and part-time employees are held to the same job performance requirements. Why can't we test them at the same time? So this has been approached with the Board of Fire and Police Commissioners um, and I believe that they're on board with that testing process being combined. Now it, it will split off when it comes to their individual interviews versus the part-time interviews that are conducted by the fire department's administration. However, that process can find a lot of great efficiencies in combining two testing processes into one. Um, number six is research and determine the cost effectiveness of a project management software tool. Um, one of the tasks that has been given to me is improve communications uh, throughout the department and throughout the village too. And one way that is, is to let everybody know where we're at and where we're going. You know, not only having a vision, but also communicating that on a daily basis of what that vision is and where we're at attaining or getting to towards the end goals of certain projects. And Kevin Gothels and I are, are deep into looking into software programs that are not only going to be good for the fire department, but can be also utilized by other village departments to help you know, spread that cost out and the effectiveness of it. But what it does is if you place a project into that software, everybody can get in there and, and view where that project is, what the goals are, who owns that project, who's in charge of it. 
and where they're at and are they meeting deadlines. The, you know, most of the project software tools that are out there will be able to send emails to the person that is in charge of that project and say, hey, you have a deadline coming up, have you forgot about that? Or they can send a message to, the, to their boss saying, hey, they just completed this task, good job. Go tell them they did a good job. Um, but it's a great way of sharing with everybody and everybody has access to it, but only certain people have editing rights. It's only if you're involved in that project can you edit that project. But everybody can see where the department's at or where every, any department's at with their projects and their goals. Um, number seven is establish a safety committee to develop and recommend related issues and initiatives to help increase uh, personnel safety and reduce risk and increase efficiency in responding to community needs. Um, that uh, committee has been it was in place to begin with, and now it has been reestablished again, and they're gonna be meeting on a regular basis to review whenever there is an, an incident that has um, relevance to risk management or relevance to um, avoiding any injuries or accidents, and you know, just to improve upon uh, what good things that we're already doing. Um, number eight is conduct battalion chief, uh, monthly battalion chiefs meetings. Um, it's only been two months and we've already had three meetings, so <laughs> we're having a lot of meetings. Not a lot, but they're, they're, they're very well informed of what's going on, not only with just the department, but also communicating what other departments within the village are doing, because our department is just yet one of many departments all combined bringing in services to the community. Uh, number nine is conduct quarterly lieutenant and battalion chief combined meetings. Uh, we've had one of those, and uh, so we've considered that a success, and it elicited a lot of a lot of good conversation, uh, especially for me being new. I've heard a lot of uh, a lot of concerns and a lot of good things that are going on with the department by having those staff members all at one time. And then it also, you know, if somebody brings up an issue, then it elicits and it brings out a lot of good conversation of how we can overcome that issue or how we can improve a project or or a topic. And then finally, the last one is conduct labor management meetings uh, when issues arise and need resolved. Um, we meet monthly for the labor management meetings. And um, we have been um, very successful in our meetings so far. We've opened up a lot of topics that um, need to be talked about, and I think we've created a lot of successes with that. So in the first little over a month, uh, we've accomplished seven out of the 10 goals, which I think is moving very quickly, uh, which is good. Uh, and I can tell you that, you know, the fire department is a, there is a great bunch of people who have a lot of knowledge of the village. They have a lot of knowledge of their profession. And they have a lot of interest in what we're doing right now. Um, when we started putting these committees together, everybody had to, whether they were an incumbent on a committee that was already standing or not, they had to send a letter of interest to me and a selection committee of a lieutenant and a battalion chief to get on that committee. Just because they were uh, an incumbent didn't mean that they were gonna be on the committee again. They had to show what their strengths are and how they can benefit the department and the village as a whole as we move forward. And I can tell you that the, the level of enthusiasm towards this open form of communication and open form of involvement and collaboration has been very successful. We had over 20 letters come in from people in the department and many of them wanted on multiple committees because they have interest or they have expertise in those in those certain committees. So, I mean, I think that was a, a huge success for us. Um, a lot of these um, 10 points are tied to council goals, and some of them are even tied to the results of the Mullen report that was just done on the overall organization of the department. So everything's been put together with existing goals from the council and also areas that were, have been brought up as um, points of yes. improvement or areas of needs from that Mullen report. <coughs> so I, I think we're moving forward very well. I appreciate everybody's support, and if you have any questions, I can answer them now. Uh, I double check with the manager, and you did include the part-timers in the committees, yes, sir. and that was a really good thing. There needs to be a lot more communication between part-timers and full-timers about what should happen and so forth. So that was a real good thing yes, that you did. Yep. Uh, glad to hear that. Uh, and, yeah, and a lot of these initiatives, Go ahead, to, be, to emphasize, the fire department doesn't see itself as 
full and part time anymore. I really believe when they're on shift together, they don't see full or part time. They know that's who's on, especially the permanent part timers that work mm -hmm. on a regular shift. They are as part of that shift as anybody from the full time ranks. And we're very fortunate, and it was the idea of the full time to really look at the standards of the part time folks coming in and use that as an asset that for recruitment that other departments don't have and to, it's to build on that strength. Mm -hmm. yeah. But they had some strong ideas on how we do it and I think management was able to answer their concerns and then develop a plan to work together on it. There, it's not either or, it's, no. it's one. Yeah, I, I believe just walking in, you know, my first couple of weeks, I had, I couldn't tell, you know, there, I mean, there is no differentiating between a part-time and a full-time person. I'm still trying to figure out who this, you know, firefighter X and firefighter Y are, if they're full-time or they're part-time. Really doesn't matter to me. They're in a, they're in a, you know, a firefighter within the department. They have the same levels of training. They have the same risk and you know, hold the same risk and responsibilities, and they act as if they're the same, and they respond as if they're the same with no issues and which you know great job for all those members that are working together because that's not heard of like that in other areas of the country I mean there's there's some pretty big risk between part-time and full-time people in other areas here I, you know I'm proud to say that we have an outstanding department that's open to working together like that that's awesome Pat. well and to that uh, JP I think mm -hmm. um, our residents wouldn't know a part-timer from a part full-timer when they show up on the doorstep and I think that's to the department's credits, to the village's credit, they are trained the same. And so I think it's a peace of mind for the residents. So yeah, the level of care that they'll receive on an emergency scene, mm -hmm. yeah. it doesn't differentiate between right. a part-time and a full-time you know? person. Exactly. They're, they're gonna get the same level of care and the same care and compassion to what their needs are at that time. Mm -hmm. But I just had a, a couple of things if I could. Sure. Um, first of all, I, I wanna say for my own self, I think this is a wonderful start. This is a great plan. I thank you for the staff and for yourself for taking it on. And uh, it was kind of nice to hear. It's not the first time uh, that we've uh, kind of moved forward in something and heard that we might be a model uh, for other places. So it's very nice to hear, JP, and I'm glad you're embracing it. I did have uh, another comment on the um, software that you're looking into. I think for those of us in the private sector, that. You know, I don't know if it's quite the same, but I considered it like a project manager software where it's the same situation. You know, you've got all these projects and people need to know where they're at and mm -hmm. right down to accounting, it's, uh, it's uh, very uh, interesting to hear. And I I'd really love to see something like that utilized uh, amongst all the departments, to be honest with you. Yeah, the, the models that we've forward. been looking at have a lot of different components to them mm -hmm. to include marketing. And, and one thing that mm -hmm. a village needs to do is market themselves. Right. Um, so I think, again, it can, be a, it can be a program that can work for not only public safety needs, but also for all the village needs. Oh, I, I think so too. I, I've, I've kind of seen how it works, to be honest with mm -hmm. you. And uh, I, I think it would be a, uh, another great uh, useful tool. My only other question was, um, and I know Ed mentioned about the part and the full timers, those that volunteer to be on committees, um, at some point though, JP, will you shift around a little bit, give others an opportunity to be on a Absol fresh set of eyes every yeah, so abso often? Absolutely, okay. I, I think we're gonna be evaluating committees on an annual basis mm -hmm. um, because people, Again, you know, we had so many people interested in so many yeah. different committees, and I want to be able to, uh, you know, be a sponge and get all that information out of them and take it and then disseminate it out for different in different areas. So, mm -hmm. uh, absolutely, yeah, yeah. definitely. Yeah. yeah, this is a great stride forward. Thank you so much. Anyone else questions or comments? <coughs> Thank you very much, Thank Chief. You, sir. Appreciate Thank you. everything. Thank you. Great presentation. Anybody else, Mark? Yes, we'd have uh, the finance director, Hitesh Desai, to give a board update on some good financial news. Yeah, good evening, uh, President and uh, Village Trustees. Thank you, Manager Rooney. Uh, as you recall, the Village Board passed the parameters ordinance for the refunding bonds on July 5th, 2016. And even in the last meeting, I briefed the Village Board about the process for refunding the bonds. And I think a couple of days after our last village board meeting, we were able to close on the deal 
Um, and we were really happy that uh, when we talked to the financial advisor, he submitted or he gave us almost seven or eight different proposals. So that shows the interest in the village of Carpenter with bonds, and including the bank, the Chase Bank, uh, with whom we finally decided to close the deal by a private placement or which is called a direct purchase. So we avoid the underwriting, so it's a less fees, it's a faster process, and less parties involved. So there is no underwriting age commission, there is no rating agency fees. So, and the process is last faster, smoother, and clean. So finally, we, we close with the chase. The actual closing will take place on August 29th. Uh, we issued 6,926,000 in refunding bonds to refund, the advance refund of our series 2008 bonds. And the gross savings out of these refunding bonds is 622,131 uh, with the true interest cost of 1.8%. So this is really good and considering this is almost a two year advance refunding, uh, generating savings of 622,000, I think it's mainly due to the current low economic environment including the low interest rate environment. And so we, by going through a Chase Bank, as I mentioned, you know, we saved in the rating agency and underwriting cost. Um, going forward on an annual basis, we would save maybe around thousand dollar in an annual paying agency cost because when we go through underwriting, we have to pay for the paying agency fee every year. Here we will directly uh, working with the Chase Bank to pay the debt service, so that's a good thing. And I was like calculating along with this, since the numbers are now finalized before this refunding, I started including the numbers from 2014 geo bonds which we issued for the infrastructure and then we did two refunding, one for the 2008 refunding bonds and one was for the IEPA refunding. And including these, I mean I came down to uh, almost $2.8 million savings from four bonds in last two years by the issue or refunding of the bonds. And this means this is, this is like a direct savings to the, or less redu reduced tax levy, debt service tax levy for the village of Carpentersville residents. So it's a lot less burden on them uh, via our debt service levy. So that's a big savings for the village of Carpentersville. And obviously, in the past, we could use it by either, you know, negotiated sale or the competitive sale. We mostly use the negotiated sale. And I really are kind of thankful to Mark Rooney. We kind of have a back and forth with the financial advisor, you know. We would talk extensively. Sometimes it would be for a um, couple of hours sometimes. And we would just say, okay, no, we are still not satisfied. And But yes, finally, I think these efforts have paid off in the last four, two years. More great news, Hitesh. Yes, yeah, awesome. excellent. Great job. That is absolutely excellent. wonderful. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, you know, because we we'd heard about we talked about this a little bit in the uh, last audit and finance committee right. and then last board meeting. So yeah, it's excellent job. Uh, way to row. Way to row. Okay. And Je Jeff Schupel is our right, financial yes. advisor from Bridgeport mm -hmm. Partners. I think you met him two years ago at the start of this project. And you know we don't have him come out to explain everything because Hitesh and I can do that. But yeah. we are very appreciative of him and all his efforts, and he's earned his <coughs> every yes, bit of his absolutely. fees because <laughs> he's not just passing us to the first bondholder out there that yeah. underwriter that would sell our bonds. Yeah. It, uh, it's a process. We need to let the residents know somehow, Hitesh. I just want to say that, that, that so I've been on the board now, what, five years? And since when I got on the board back in 11, oh, yeah, 2011, that uh, it's come a long way since then, and a real long way. And Paul always likes to use the, the uh, story about how he used to get a one-page uh, budget, you know, and now it's, a, you know, it's complete. Everything's accounted for, so. Great job, we won the award again. Uh, that is just outstanding uh, to see that. Okay, thank you. Thank, thank you, Atesh. Anybody else want to? That would conclude our report from managers and staff tonight. Well, this time I'll actually remember to go to commissions next. Uh, 
Don, anything to report this evening? Uh, let's see. Uh, Quadcom is coming up next week, it's the 24th. So after that, that's, that's all. Uh, we haven't had an audit and finance meeting since the since the last uh, board meeting. However, our next meeting, I believe, is September 8th, and that will be our unofficial kickoff to the 2017 uh, fiscal budget year. So we'll do a six-month uh, fiscal year 2016 <coughs> review, make sure everything is in, in line with projections, uh, and, and along those lines, we'll also uh, discuss revenue projections for fiscal year 2016, uh, you know, sort of setting the table for what... Uh, what we'll be doing in fiscal year 2017. Is that at 6.30 at Public Works? Yep. Yeah. Okay, okay. Pat? Uh, for committee reports? Yes. Uh, the uh, Parks Committee will be meeting um, after a, a brief hiatus on September 12th at 6.30 at Public Works. Uh, special Events Committee will meet tomorrow night at 6.30, uh, also at Public Works, and we'll largely be talking about uh, our recent Civil War event, kind of recapping uh, uh, that um, uh, fun event, and um, I have uh, I have a lot I could say about that Civil War event. Um, I've been thanking everybody for months now, it seems, in advance, because of the people that have been uh, so diligent and working so hard on it. Um, it was a success. There was no doubt about it. The reenactors just were floating when they left. And I um, have told a few people, and you know, we wondered about our initial first year event, uh, how good it would be. And uh, they kind of gave an example. Um, Stanford's Battery had their first event in Lombard. They had a total of seven tents mm -hmm. and a handful of reenactors. Our first event, we had three big tents for settlers. I don't know how many of the civilian tents, plus all of the reenactors. We had a total of 175 reenactors in the park. And all of them have asked, are, are, can, are we coming back, are we coming back? And um, Ed and I attended, there was a ball at Parkview School, and it was, I was tired, and, but it was really good to go because the first brigade band played for the ball, and we really got to hear them up close and because uh, we were running around in the park and they were just phenomenal and uh, at that point uh, during a little break um, I had a video and I just wasn't able to send it out on my phone but Ed formally invited them back to, uh, to come next year and so they're very very excited about it uh, our residents seem to have loved it our vendors loved it um, the drama club the kids had a ball they, they all said they'd love to come back, and it was a really good experience. Their drama coach, uh, Mr. Biro from District 300, was happy. Um, you know, the list is so long for all the thank yous. Uh, I will be, will be sending out, uh, I want to do thank you letters, letters of appreciation, and I have a few personal cards that I'm going to be sending out. Um, big thanks to our uh, police department. I think it went without incident. Uh, I sent out an email, we s I saw a few of them. At the end of Sunday, I said, hey guys, what'd you think, everything quiet? Oh, like a mouse pad. And it was, no incidents at all. Fire was incredible. I was telling JP, I ran into a few of them. Uh, they had fun, they got to light the cannon, they loved it. Uh, so staff being so supportive, mm -hmm. uh, Manager Rooney being supportive, the board being so supportive, and then mm -hmm. I, I hope I don't miss anybody, but Bob Cole's department was just stellar. And the reenactors were bowled over with him, bowled over with this village. And once again, they're just talking amongst themselves that they might not do Lombard and they might just want to consider making Carpentersville their home base here. So that's a testament to all of our hard work. Bob's, Spence, you know, Michelle, his admin was just amazing. So it was, it was, it was just wonderful. And I don't mean to run on, but it was, you could see it by the pictures, the videos out there. It, it was really a lot of fun. And we've had some residents ask too if it was going to come back. So that was good to know. We did a, the right thing too by alerting the folks around the park about the noise, and actually I don't think it was as noisy as I thought it was gonna be, to be honest with you, so. And um, 
And I'm sure Ginger has a lot to say too, so we had a lot of fun. But uh, uh, I hope that uh, the next year will uh, be as much. Stanford's battery, they change it up every year. So they, are, they are already were thinking on Sunday about how wonderful that park was and what they can do next year. So I, I thank everyone in this room from mm -hmm. the bottom of my heart and uh, all, everyone that helped so very much. And um, as far as events go, I'll just mention it if I could, a few more coming up. So um, <laughs> the uh, unit came out, a few of the guys, there was a little repair to a few pieces of the lawn where they had some fire pits. Um, and uh, they sent me an email, wow, now you got a carnival in town. <laughs> so, and not to take a breath here, but we do, Rock the Fox will be this weekend. It sounds like they've got some great bands. I'll just kind of give everyone a rundown. You can certainly visit uh, the Oddfellows site. Um, it's free admission this year, and they're very excited about that, and uh, I am too. Now they will have a carnival, and the carnival rides uh, are, you have to pay for, um, but I believe they've worked out a deal where you can get an all-day pass for the carnival rides too at a reduced price. Um, they'll have a beer garden, they'll have food vendors and some other things, but I guess on Friday it starts, kicks off at 5 o'clock, and that'll be the uh, country music night. And they're, they're really excited because there's um, Country Thunder, I believe it is in... Uh, this Friday. Yeah, this Friday, yes, uh, in Wisconsin. And they've, they've got a band or two that play there regularly. So Friday, uh, excuse me, Saturday, they start at 1, and I think that's to 11 o'clock, and that's classic rock, I think, for most of the day. And then on Sunday, they open up at 1, and it's still close, you know, 5, 6 o'clock, I guess. But uh, a jazz ensemble and maybe a little disco. So kind of a little bit of a throwback, it sounds like. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So I still got my white suit. Yeah, so, they, uh, so it should be a lot of fun. I encourage our residents to go. I mean, you know, even if you just buy a hot dog and listen to some music, it's a great park. And uh, it, the weather is supposed to hold up again. And I think it's a lot of fun. They put a lot of work and effort into it. And again, want to thank Bob and his department because he's been working alongside to make sure that they have what they need um, so that they can have a successful event. Um, also then on the 26th, um, H2O Church, their last movie of the summer, hard to believe, summer will be over, August 26th. They're gonna be showing Zootopia. And I think they usually start around 8.20, 8.30. It gets a little darker, but I know you can go there earlier. They like to have, they've got some food vendors and fun games for the kids. So last movie in the park. So I hope everybody can attend. And then last but not least, uh, September 10th and 11th, uh, Kelly Miller Circus will be here in town, also in the park. Um, I did speak, uh, thank you, Mark uh, Huber. I did speak to Dave Williams just before I came in uh, that runs it. And um, there, the tentative dates for the uh, times, rather, for those two dates might be a 5 and an 8 p.m. show, and they might consider uh, maybe a 2 p.m. on Sunday. Tickets are very reasonable, uh, $12 for adults, 6 for children. However, within the next week or two, their publicity team will be coming into some of our, um, our retailers here and leaving tickets for free admission for kids. So keep your eye out, they'll be on the counters and um, you know the kids could get in free. And I, he wanted me to mention too that on Saturday they'll, they'll be here, they'll be here early, but the actual big tent raising will be at 9 a.m. Families and kids are welcome to come and uh, they do a little tour of the circus and uh, so it should be uh, kind of fun to come and see the big top go up. So. And uh, I don't know, I can't say that's our last event for the year. You know, the committee's meeting, we got lots of ideas and uh, some very good ones. And uh, I hope to keep the fun and uh, family fun, if you will, for our residents going. So, with that. Uh, are we still going to have the uh, motor or the not motocross? The October cross, we ah. will. We c will announce that here, but I don't have any details. Okay. It's kind of a chamber event. Okay. And, but I will reach out to Jeff and make sure that we get the details so that we can make announcements too as a board and encourage everybody to come. Yeah, great, yeah, yeah, they'll be doing that. That's a big event. That'll be in October, yeah. So that'll be great. Big so, event. and that uh, would conclude my report. So.
Don, do you still have your rainbow wig so you can go to the disco night? Absolutely, my white <laughs> suit, you know. <laughs> I'll be watching for you. <laughs> okay. Um, <clears throat> well, we have no old business tonight under new business. We have a resolution approving a contract for the Ball Avenue Extension Project to Plody Construction Incorporated of Hoffman Estates, Illinois. The amount of $592,588. Need a motion? A motion. A second. Motion, Ginger. Second, Pat. Any discussion? Mark, any just, comments? Uh, just the fiscal impact so the folks at home and the audience know this, this project will be funded out of the capital project fund, the bond money, but it will be repaid by the Route 25 TIF okay. over time. So this will be. In the route, it will connect here, the backside of the Walmart Ball Avenue where it ends will come down to Beesinger Drive at a stop sign will be added at that point. But it will give uh, full access around the Walmart site. And staff on Thursday, Mark Huber and Pat Burke are gonna meet with uh, folks from Pace to discuss a new uh, bu bus route and connectivity to bring in people right to the front door instead of down at the corner of Lake Marion and then they walk up and so we, we're going to impact when the road is completed they will have a route already designated you know to better serve the public mm -hmm. do you have a completion date maybe the, the, Mark, the start date it should be it should be completed by close of asphalt in early November November okay Really? And, and this should be a good addition for people to get around more easily into Walmart. Anybody coming from this side of town is going to have an easier back route in. A lot of people have been complaining about getting over to Alliance Plaza, and with this going through, that should allow more people to get on to 25 and turn left to get to the Alliance Plaza instead of having to do some circuitous route through all the neighborhoods to get there. So it'll be a big benefit to all of us. And really, you don't want to say no cost, but it, that's why you have TIFs. So you can do things like this that are good for the businesses, but also for the residents of the village. Uh, with that, any other comments? Uh, Mike, call the roll, please. Trustee Savvy. Yes. Trustee Rayburn. Yes. Trustee Schultz. Yes. Trustee Burroway. Aye. Trustee Stevens. Aye. <laughs> Couple of sailors down there. Yeah. <laughs> Just messing with you. Uh, well, that uh, that takes care of new business. We're ready the for trustee way. reports. Uh, Ginger, we'll have you go first there this evening. Go. Oh, goodness. Um, well, I'll just kind of play off of what Pat had to say um, about the Civil War reenactment. I have to tell you, I've never, I had never been to one before. And so I really wasn't quite sure what to, ex to expect. We did go to the Lombard one, um, although we weren't there for very long because it was so hot out that day. But um, this was, again, it was hot. And I, I really, <laughs> those guys in those wool jackets and wool pants and um, the ladies with the long dresses. And, and I have to tell you, they were, <laughs> they were in full dress the whole time, the whole weekend. And it just as you walk through the park and you would see a group of adults teaching children, they were doing their readers or, or something like that. Another tent would be teaching music. Um, it, there was just so much to see. I hope people really got through the whole park and got to see all of the, the things that were happening. The, the three vendor tents were interesting. They sold settlers, settlers, excuse settlers. me. And that's spelled S U T L E R S, <laughs> not settlers, S E E. No, um, they're, those are settlers. S U T L E R S. Um, they, they sold a lot of, um, uh, Heavy uh, wool jackets. <laughs> wool jackets. Yeah, to the uh, reenactors. Very, um, all of the cos I don't. I don't want to call them costumes, but they were uniforms that um, that would be have 
would have been worn in the Civil War era. They had gloves that the um, generals and, and stuff would wear. And I remember my dad would always say, uh, like hats with the scrambled eggs, that always tells people how um, high up the ranks they are, the more eggs they have. Well, these had uh, scrambled eggs on the um, gloves. So it might be uh, a material here, but this part is was like a leather or a faux leather, I guess, with the scrambled eggs on it um, to complement a uniform. And then they had bonnets, uh, ladies' bonnets. Um, they had stovepipe hats, um, boots, um, mugs, uh, caught, you know, the tins that they ate from. Um, it just, just things that I, I, I would see in the, I remember seeing things like that in the um, old Army Navy surplus store back in my hometown when I was in high school. Um, but uh, I didn't walk out buying anything because that's not my style, but um, I'm sure that the, the reenactors probably bought a lot of things to go with their uniforms for the next um, time out in the park. But um, as I, was it Friday? I think it was Friday night after they, you know, they were coming in on Friday and setting up and stuff and I saw that they were building their little campfires and stuff and, and I got home and, it, and I probably went to bed about 10 o'clock and I remember I, I laid down and I went, Oh, what is that smell? Something's burning. And I thought, oh my God, did I leave the stove on or something? And I kind of got up and I walked around and no, I it didn't. And it dawned on me that it was their campfires that I was smelling. The wind, you know, there was a little bit of a breeze and it was the firewood that I could smell. And so it was so authentic. Um, I just I just enjoyed, it was a lot of work. We all, we all worked and we were exhausted. I, I could have slept for days, but um, I think overall everybody had fun. I post. I took a lot of pictures. I took a few videos. I posted them all out on the Carpenter Park Facebook page. So if you haven't seen any pictures, there's plenty of them out there. A lot of other people, uh, residents that took pictures, also uh, posted their pictures and videos. We had some professional photographers that were there that took pictures, very unique type of pictures. Um, like a, a black and white or a sepia type of mm -hmm. picture, and I just remember oh, the yeah. the band, uh, the first brigade band, was standing by the amongst the trees, playing, and there was a woman that was holding the music up, a music sheet for one of the the guys, and her everything else was black and white, and her dress was a really vivid blue. Uh, it was a, just a really pretty picture. So there there's a lot of great shots out there if you haven't seen anything. Um, Please, please go visit the Carpenter Park page. Um, oh gosh, I just don't know where to, it was just, it was an eventful uh, weekend and I think everybody enjoyed it and I can't wait for it, well I can wait for it to come back. I'm not quite ready to do all that again, but uh, we do welcome them to come back next year again. And that concludes my report. Um, I don't have a lot tonight. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to go to the Civil War reenactment because we were out of town, but I've heard uh, just story after story of people who were so thrilled with it. Um, we didn't, it seemed like we didn't have any noise complaints. I mean, people understood there was going to be cannons and gunfire. Um, who won? I wasn't able to go. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, no, the, the one thing I want to touch on, this is big news, we can, we can mention this, right? Uh, we got the Ocelot grant finally, so the park is finally going to be finished. So, Bob, if you could have that all done by next weekend, <laughs> that would be uh, that would be great. But no, the uh, this is the thing I get asked about most often: is Carpenter's yes. Park. When's it going to be done? When's it going to be done? Well, the state finally unfroze the money, so I'm assuming we're going to be discussing very quickly getting the contractors and getting this started, and hopefully the playground equipment will be yes. up ASAP. So that's yes. that's some some good news. So. That's it. Stay tuned. Yeah, I want to second uh, uh, Jeff's uh, excitement about the Oslot grant. It's great that we have that back back up and running. It was sort of unexpected, uh, given things in Springfield haven't really changed all that much, but uh, the right purse strings were shaken loose, and, and we have some money to spend now uh, uh, where it's sorely needed. So th it's, it's great to get that back on track. I think that'll be, uh, when that's done, that, that'll really be a, a gem. 
uh, here in Carpentersville for a park that's been underutilized for decades. So it's great to see. And in the meantime, it's fantastic to see what the Parks Department, or Parks Commission and uh, Village staff, Public Works Department, everyone has done with the park in the meantime. Uh, Trustee Schultz, uh, Trustee Stevens, you deserve a victory lap for the efforts that, that you've done. Uh, Bob, you as well. Um, it, the, the feedback from the community has been really encouraging to see. We, we don't get a whole lot of feedback from the community just in general, uh, but after the Civil War reenactment, I, I received probably as much feedback to, as I received uh, in the last year total. So, and all positive for the Civil War reenactment. So, uh, it, great job. Uh, excited to see that become a part of the fabric of, of the community and it, it, mainly because it seems like the community is excited to have it too and it's, it's something that Carpentersville has always, always struggled with is trying to find an identity, trying to find some things that we can uh, take to the surrounding communities and be proud of and this seems like it, it's one of those things so fantastic job. Thank you. Well, I, you know, I think I said everything earlier, so all my thank yous. I, it's a really good point, Kevin, and, and we did have some great positive feedback, even from the vendors, the people that were there. Um, we, you know, I hope the Rotary Club enjoyed the pie eating contest. Ed was up behind there. He was smiling big. We noticed his daughter was down there. We were noticing he was looking. I don't know if you were looking at the pie or if you just were enjoying the event. Uh, Ed, but it, it, uh, that was fun. And there'll be things that we'll improve on. Thing where, like I said, tomorrow at the events committee, we, you know, as a first year event, there were some things we could do a little better. There were some things that just worked out great. And uh, I, I'm looking forward to it. I'm, I'm willing to put in the time. And I know the committee is also there to be commended too for their diligence to uh, uh, want to see these things uh, to fruition. And Again, as Kevin pointed out, it, it helps with our identity and it helps with our marketability. Um, I personally uh, was talking to one realtor and I would actually like to uh, get out to a few more and start letting them know that when they're talking about our town, that there are things that are here for families to do. And it doesn't cost, you know, the equivalent of a week's vacation. And, they can do some fun things in town, and we're moving ahead uh, in many ways. So she was very interested in listening, and uh, um, I'm hoping that we can get that word out, and I hope this is a small part of the uh, marketing that we talk about all the time uh, for our village. So it, it elevates the image. There's no doubt about it. So so thank you. That, that would conclude my report. Wow. <coughs> and... Uh, I too want to thank everybody involved with the uh, uh, Civil War reenactment. It was excellent. Uh, I thought it was a great show. Uh, Bob, uh, thank you for your help and all your staff there. And, and of course, leading the way was uh, Ginger and Pat here. Um, and I went down there on uh, Saturday, I think it was, yeah. And I was walking along just kind of you know, going, wow, look, this looks pretty cool, you know, and then they set a cannon off, scared the bejesus out of me. <laughs> Thought I was going to have a heart attack right there, but I didn't. And I'm like, oh, yeah, I got to remember. Uh, but I was so engrossed in, in watching what was going on like that and uh, looking in all the tents and seeing all the, the, the old furniture and the old ways, and it was really, really neat. Uh, so uh, excellent, ex excellent show. Thank you guys again for all the hard work that you put into that. Uh, just getting it all together was just amazing, and it came out really, really good. Um, <clears throat> my next item is, uh, I just wanted to mention it again, uh, August 31st, 6.30 out here. This will, you'll see these posters around. This is going to be put up around the, uh, the uh, <coughs> village hall and such. Uh, for the uh, Overdose Awareness Day uh, that uh, uh, Terry Dudar sp uh, spoke on earlier today. That's something that is uh, was a project that the, the Chief has, has helped out a great deal and, and Terry uh, bring this message to families in Carpentersville for the epidemic of, of uh, drug overdose and it, it's uh, they're going to have people there that are, are, are uh, from the grief recovery after a substance passing. I don't know if you've ever been involved in anything like that or had anybody close to you uh, die, from, uh, die from a drug overdose, but it's devastating. 
It is devastating to the whole family. It's devastating to the community. Uh, and it's something that can be prevented. So thank the board for their support and letting us put this on out there. I appreciate that and uh, hope to see you. I'll be out there on Wednesday, August 31st, 630, little candlelight vigil, people there with, uh, to, able to help if you have that kind of problem. And if you'd like to come out and show your support, that's welcome too. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, again, well, several things. Uh, Ozlot Grant, uh, a number of different mayors and stuff, me included, have been putting a lot of pressure on our legislators. I'm glad to see they finally shook this loose. Uh, there really wasn't a legitimate reason for it not to have been done when it was supposed to be done. But uh, now that it, now that it's uh, now that we got the grant, and we'll have to figure out how we're going to put the rest of the money in and work could probably begin pretty quickly. Uh, we're, we're looking at fast as possible. So we'll talk about that at our later session and, and we'll have a plan and get this underway as soon as we can. Uh, Saturday is our board uh, retreat, I guess you would call it, where we a retreat? do our- Retreat? Well, yeah. We're going to have donuts this goals, year? Right? When you go all the way upstairs to a separate <laughs> room and, and, and have uh, all the cookies and everything. That <laughs> well, that's not my idea. <laughs> oh, well. <laughs> anyway, uh, we will be going over our, we'll review the goals from past years. Okay. We will yeah. look at new goals. We'll reorder our goals, prioritize them so that we have, here's number one, two, three, four. We've got to make it a little bit easier for staff because I don't know that we've, ever really prioritize them as well as we should. Uh, so that stuff will all be happening on Saturday. Trustees, if you have any ideas, you're going to have to get them to me by Thursday so that I can get them incorporated and typed up and into some usable form. If they haven't been turned in in advance, I'm not going to take any off the floor on Saturday morning. Uh, but. Residents, if you have a suggestion that should be a goal for the village, Send you can email us. me on my village email, and, and I will include resident suggestions as well uh, that we would consider at our, sun, at our Saturday meeting, uh, just like any other suggestion that comes in. So residents, uh, village email, go on the website. I'm on there. You can find me and send me a note. We did go to, uh, Pat and I went to the Fox View back to school event. That was very nice. They had a number of vendors. Mm -hmm. uh, they let me talk a little bit, which is it's not exciting. a good thing, but, but it was a nice event. There were just <coughs> lots and lots of kids there getting school supplies and getting a free hot dog and stuff like that. It was just uh, Faith, Faith Walk Harvest does those, uh, one at the end of school and one at the beginning. A and it's always a nice event. Good community event, Ted. It was yeah. a very good community event. Right, it was, yeah. absolutely. Uh, it was open to everybody. You didn't have to be from Foxview to go, but that's the location that they used. Uh, on the reenactment, uh, we had one thing there that I was especially uh, excited about, and that's called the First Union Band. First Brigade. Union. Pardon? First Brigade Band. First Brigade yeah. Band. I'm sorry. That's First right. Brigade Band. And they actually use instruments that are from 1865 and older. There are no recreation uniform uh, instruments or new instruments. They are actual Civil War era instruments. I thought that was really interesting. And uh, the band director stopped in the middle of the <coughs> program and told some interesting stories about uh, what happened and, and a band that came in between two fighting armies at some point and, and just really good stories. Abe Lincoln had two presentations each day and they were excellent. One was more or less uh, his homespun stories and the other one w included the Gettysburg Address and, and uh, his words of wisdom to the nation, so to speak. Uh, I know Pat and Bob Cole were walking around with, they were writing stuff down for next year. How can we make this even better? 
Uh, if there are any citizens who have suggestions, I'm sure you can find Pat's email and, or Bob's and send them suggestions. This event will get better every year. The first year was great. I don't know what's better than great, but that's what it's going to be next year. Probably bigger and uh, with more uh, stations and things like that. And I would like to point out, this is a perfect example of how we want to use our gaming money. Something that is for the citizens of Carpentersville, it's not a street, it's not a squad car. The money won't go to day-to-day -day stuff. It will be to do something special for the people of the village. And this was the first really big thing we've done with gaming money. We've done little stuff. But if you have suggestions, it's a, it's a citizen-driven suggestion system. So if you have a suggestion for something, whether it be small or large, send them in. Send them to the Parks Commission, Kara Pat, and uh, she'll see that they get vetted and, and they decide what to do with them. Uh, with that, uh, oh, I did also, Piece of Cake Bakery supplied 10 pies for free, blueberry pies. I guess the people who were eating the pies said they were very tasty, but but they were also nose deep and all the way out to their ears with stuff. It was a it was a cool event, and Piece of Cake even provided two gift certificates, all oh. of no charge, and just a thank you to them for, you know, they're not even from Carpentersville, but that didn't stop them from supporting the did event. Did you get a piece of pie while you hmm? were there? Did you get a piece of pie while you were there? Did, did, would you like a piece of pie that somebody had <laughs> stuck their nose in and was, in, no, I did not I get a piece of pie. Got, you know. <laughs> no, no, 10 pies, 10 contestants. <laughs> maybe next year we'll go to 15. We'll, we'll see. Uh, annual event, I hope. Well, with that, uh, we'll close the trustee report, so we're ready for closed session with sections 2C1, 2C2, and 2C11 of the Open Meetings Act. I need a motion. We also need, oh. also need uh, 2C5 and 2C6. 2C5 and 2C6. So we have a long list. 2C1, 2C2, 2C5, 2C6, and 2C11. And I'd need a motion to go to closed session. I'll motion. Motion, Jeff. Second. Second. Don. Uh, <laughs> call a roll, please. For a closed session, Trustee Rayberg. Yes. Trustee Schultz. Yes. Trustee Burroway. Yes. Trustee Stevens. Yes. Trustee Sabin. Aye, aye. <laughs> Move to closed session to reconvene to discuss some other yeah, village business.